This is Epitome Training for the Epitome IP PBX. This session covers the routing of calls. This video can be viewed at any time on the Epitome YouTube page, but please note that extensions and trunks have already been created on the PBX that is part of this video. If you have not created extensions or provisioned trunks, please review those videos first. When calls ring into the PBX, these calls will follow a basic ringing destination that is automatically created in the Epitome PBX. Usually it is necessary to direct calls of specific types to specific destinations. This is covered in call routing incoming. The Epitome PBX provides great flexibility in directing calls. For outbound calling, when extensions dial telephone numbers, the PBX must be configured as to how these calls will be placed. This is done in call routing outgoing. Since outbound calling often requires rules, class of service is used to groom outbound calling properties as they are applied to PBX extensions. Epitome provides a default class of service that allows simple setup of a general outbound calling path. Creating new classes of service to be applied to certain extensions for which the default is not appropriate are often required. An example of this is all calls allowed except international calling. Navigate to the PBX GUI page, Call Routing Incoming. First we'll look at Enable Day-Night Mode. When the application is suited to a user or users who will have the responsibility of setting the incoming ring mode of the system, Enable Day-Night Mode is selected. Otherwise, the system can process incoming call routing with great efficiency and automation choices using schedules or a fixed path. When Enable Day-Night Mode is selected, two additional buttons appear, Edit Night and Edit Hours. In the heading that appears, you will see that you are editing the day mode incoming ringing. Click on Edit Night. Notice the screen appears to be the same except that your selections are being applied to the night mode. Click on Edit Hours. Here you are able to program the simple schedule that is available for selection from the Is Operator extensions. When the schedule mode is selected by the user, this is the schedule that will be used to determine which destination pattern is to be followed for the times programmed. Notice the lunch hours time periods that can be set if there is a specific lunch time when calls should follow night ringing destinations. Also note that it is possible to select Apply Forward Settings. This allows you to direct calls not only to the destination, but if that destination's call forward is invoked, you can use this checkbox to indicate that incoming calls should also follow that forwarding. Save changes to store what you've changed. Navigate back to Call Routing Incoming, and then to Default Incoming Destination, and select a system destination from those available. Note that more options will be available when they are programmed in coming sessions, menus, groups, and schedules, etc. The destination here is where incoming calls will be routed when they have not been set to route elsewhere. Remember that there is a destination for day mode and night mode. Scroll down. Under Providers, notice that the providers that we have programmed in previous sessions are in those listed. You can select a specific default destination for each provider in that provider's header. Under each provider are any DID numbers that are associated to that provider. Now scroll up and click on Edit DID Caller ID. This is a list of the DID numbers that are programmed into the various providers. Use these boxes to input an identifying code or name for each DID desired. An empty box will keep the DID Caller ID as it is received from the provider. A name or number in these boxes overwrites the Caller ID received from the provider unless you choose to prepend the Caller ID. When prepending, your entry will appear in the caller ID space on the telephone display as the first few characters of the caller ID information. We suggest keeping these prepends short to preserve as much of the original caller ID as possible. Click Save Changes to store what you've changed. When using day-night mode, an extension or extensions must be programmed for the ability to change the mode. Go to Destinations, Extensions. For every user that is to have this ability, set the PBX extension programming feature Is Operator to Yes. These telephones must also have a Day-Night Mode button. Go to the Phone Programming page to program the Day-Night Mode button onto that telephone. Now we're going to set up the PBX for outgoing calls. 
navigate to call routing, outgoing. Now is a good time to note that pure IP telephony, like the epitome, allows for a completely open dialing scheme. The epitome allows for three and four digit extension numbers. Take a minute to digest that because this means that your PBX will allow both formats to be used simultaneously. Your system can have an extension 100 and an extension 1000. This is not possible in most other platforms. When digit patterns are dialed that are not extension numbers, they must be routed. We must match the usual digit patterns and any new specific digit patterns to trunks. At the top of the page is an Add Custom Route button. We're not going to say more about this than it is an optional licensed feature that requires engineering implementation specific to the application. Contact your Epitome salesperson for any additional information. Also at the top of this page is a link to the Class of Service programming. We'll cover Class of Service soon. When you select a Class of Service to view, only those routes that are assigned to that Class of Service are shown. At this point, the only Class of Service is default. Notice that there is a Delete button, small circle with a red X in it, on each box of each route. It's easy to delete a route that is not needed. We're going to edit one route. 1 plus dialing, or 11 digits. Click on the pencil for this route. The route name can be changed if desired. The start pattern is that of the actual digit string that will be dialed by the user, which the system will use to review and process the call. In this route, the pattern is 1x. x is a wild card that allows any number. n is another wild card that represents any number except 1 and zeros. Digits is the actual length of the pattern that will be dialed. Since 1 plus numbers are always 11 digits in length, we set this value to 11, and exact length to yes. The subroute digits is set to 3, indicating that if a subroute is to be used, it will be referenced when the dialed pattern includes the three digits identified. Usually, this will reference an area code. In the 1 plus dialing route, an area code will always come after the first digit, 1, is dialed. Therefore, the subroute offset is set to 1, indicating that the system will ignore that quantity of digits dialed before referencing a defined subroute. We have enough information now to create a subroute. Since we haven't changed anything on this screen, we'll just navigate back to Call Routing Outgoing. Now click on Add Route. I'm going to name this route 941 because I intend to make it a subroute. To do so, I select 1 plus dialing from the route type pull-down. If I select new, I would create a new primary route. In the number box, input 941. This is the pattern that I want to match. I must save changes now before I can program other route parameters. Now select the trunk group that will be used for this digit pattern. I want to use PRI. Since 941 is a local area code, I want to route all calls for this type using only the PRI trunks. Then click Add. The trunk group selected is now in the available trunks box. Here again, the digit pattern is a local number and doesn't require the 1 or the area code. So I will click on the trunk group of those available and input a 4 into the strip digits box so that when the digit pattern is sent to the carrier, only those digits necessary to place the call over that carrier are output to the carrier. Click on Save Changes to save the changes made. Now navigate back to Call Routing Outgoing and notice that the new route is added as a subroute under OnePlus. Click on the pencil for the OnePlus primary route. At this point, there are no trunks selected for this route. I'm going to select both PRI and AirSpring, which are SIP trunks. When I do this, in that order, they appear reversed as to what I want. I want the SIP trunks to be used first for all OnePlus dialing and the PRI trunks only when there are no SIP trunks available. So I'll click on the AirSpring and then click the Up button to move this trunk in priority up over the PRI trunks. Extensions can have a unique caller ID set for either their name or number or both. Set Disable Extension Caller ID Override to Yes if you want to stop that feature from working on this route. It is possible to send caller ID that is received on incoming calls outward with outbound transferred calls. To do so, set Force Use PSTN CID to Yes. The route itself can also override caller ID name, number, or both. To do so, select Yes, and then program the desired name and or number.
We have one more exercise in call routing outgoing, the creation of a new primary route. I'm going to illustrate this by creating a route called Emergency Test. In the Start Pattern box, I input 933, since that's the number used to verify emergency services. In the Digits box, I input 3, and set Exact Length to Yes. Since I want this call to go out over a local connection first, I'll select and add PRI. Then I'll select and add AirSpring in case there are no PRI circuits available. Now we'll cover Class of Service. Navigate to Call Routing, Class of Service. The System Default Class of Service is shown. Notice that all of the default routes are part of this Class of Service. There is only one route not listed in this Class of Service, our newly created Emergency Test Class of Service. If I click on the pull-down, I'll see that it is the only choice to add to this class of service since all others are already a part of the class of service. To add it, click Add. That dialing pattern is now possible for anyone originating a call with this class of service. It's often necessary to add classes of service. We illustrate this by creating a new class of service that prohibits long-distance calls. First name the class of service in the name box. Now click on Clone. The refreshed page will be that of the newly created class of service. It will have all of the routes of the previous class of service in view. Now click on the delete for each route that should not be a part of this class of service. One plus, international, and 10 digit calling. When all changes are made, click on apply changes. Classes of service are applied to system destinations such that the dialing patterns allowed at those destinations are possible. First, let's look at PBX Setup General, General Settings. You'll find Default Class of Service here. You can use this field to quickly and easily change the class of service applied to all destinations since this field is referenced by all destinations when the system is delivered. Each destination can have a specific class of service. In Destinations, Extensions, click on the pencil for extension 220. In the Class of Service box, notice it says None, Use Default. This is how this telephone is directed to the PBX Setup General setting that we just reviewed. If a new class of service is desired, select it for this extension. We can select our newly created No Long Distance class of service to apply that class of service to this extension. Branch Office is another location where class of service can be applied. If you have a Branch Office programmed, open that page and scroll to Class of Service to set that as desired. Any call that originated at the branch office PBX that is being routed through this PBX will have the class of service applied. You should now have the ability to set up an epitome system for basic telephony functions with extensions and trunks that are functional. The coming modules will introduce you to epitome's applications. Thank you.